If your house is at all like mine, it seems like cleaning up is a never-ending task. There are times I wish I could get some help. We may not be able to hire someone to help us tidy up our house, but we already have some help to keep our inbox clean and tidy. Outlook gladly helps us mark, move, and even delete things. So let's take a look at how we can configure rules to help us automate keeping things tidy in Outlook. Of course, there are several ways to create rules. An easy one is to simply right-click on a message. When we see the shortcut menu, we can come all the way down where it says Rules, and then choose Always Move Messages From, and it will say whoever the message currently is from. When we give this a click or a tap, a window will appear asking us to designate the folder to which we want to move the messages. It's really that simple. We're not going to do this right now, so we're just going to click or tap Cancel. That method is fast and easy, and it works very well. But we have two more methods at our disposal. The next is also to right-click and to come down to Rules. But this time, if we choose Create Rule, we actually get more options. In addition to just saying, when I get mail from this particular person, we also could say, and or, if the subject contains the same words as this particular message does, and or, we could say, if it's sent to me only, and we can also say different things we want to do with it. To display it in the new item alert window. To play a particular sound. To move the item to a folder. There's all kinds of things that we can configure very quickly, just from a bunch of checkboxes and a couple of choices using this particular option. But once again, we're going to go ahead and click Cancel. If we kept it very clean and using either of these methods simply said, when I get a message from Chris, go ahead and move it to a particular folder, that would all be very well and good. But it's going to create a rule for each individual or subject. If we work with several people from the same company, we'd end up with lots of rules that all move messages to the same folder. Another option that we have is to create the rule manually. And that way we can have all the mail we receive from an entire domain moved to a folder with one rule. And that's gonna keep things a little bit cleaner and more efficient. We can access our rules by opening up the Backstage from the File tab, or we can do it right from the Home tab. We'll go ahead and use the Home tab since it's already selected. If we take a look at the options near the right-hand side in the Move group, one of them is the Move option itself. But we also have one called Rules. Here again, we see similar options to what we had by right-clicking. Always Move Messages from Chris, Create Rule, or the last one we haven't taken a look at yet, which is Manage Rules and Alerts. This opens up the Rules and Alerts window with all kinds of options that we can work with. Here, we can work with both rules and alerts. We can create rules, change rules, copy rules, and of course, delete rules, and even rearrange them or force all of the rules to run now. Because we don't currently have any rules, that might be a good place to start. We'll click or tap New Rule. Fortunately, Outlook provides a lot of presets that we can use to quickly configure rules, including ways of staying organized and even staying up to date. What we want to do is say anytime we get messages from anybody at Infinite Skills, we want that moved to our Infinite Skills folder. We might be tempted to choose the very first option, move messages from someone to a folder. But the problem with that is it's actually looking for an individual email address, and that's not what we want to do. So instead, we're going to come down and choose Apply the rule on messages I receive. This is starting with a blank rule, but it's okay. The wizard's going to walk us through it. Once we select that, we click Next on the bottom. Now we simply need to define our criteria. What are the conditions that we're checking for? When we have a rule, something has to be evaluated as true in order for the rule to run. Again, we could say from a certain person or public group. But this is a little trick and why I wanted to show it to you specifically. To do an actual domain, we need to do something a little bit different. If we start to look down, what we can see is with specific words in the message header. Remember, the header is things like the to, the cc, the bcc, the subject line, and the account. That one's getting close, but what's even better is the one that says with specific words in the sender's address. We don't care about anything else in the message. But if the sender is from Infinite Skills, that's when we want it moved to this folder. Notice that when we place a check mark, we're starting to build the rule down below. Any place that we see a hyperlink is where we need to provide specific information. 
So apply this rule after the message arrives with specific words in the sender's address. We obviously need to designate the specific words. So we'll click or tap on the link and we can add as many different combinations of words as is appropriate. In this case, we just want to put infiniteskills.com. Always check your typing because typos do count. Then we'll click or tap add. And as I said, we can go ahead and add as many words here as we want. But for our purposes, that's all we need. We'll click or tap OK. We aren't going to get too fancy with our rule, but we certainly can. But all we have to do is simply proceed on through the wizard. After we click Next, we see that we do have options about what we want to do with the message. We want to move it to the specified folder. Again, we click on Specified and designate the exact folder we want it moved to. We can actually do multiple actions if we choose to. And don't forget to scroll down because there are a lot of other things that we can do. One of the things that I prefer is to stop processing more rules. In other words, apply this rule after the message arrives with infiniteskills.com in the sender's address. Move it to the infinite skills folder and then stop processing any more rules because there isn't anything else I want to do with it. The best thing that you can do when you're creating rules is speak it out loud to yourself. My basic saying is, if you can say it, you can create a rule for it. And while we're creating them, if we can read it and it sounds correct, it probably is. When we click Next, we're actually given an option to designate if there are any exceptions. In other words, do that unless something else is true. We don't have any of those, so we'll click Next again. Now we need to give a name for the rule. And of course, what you name your rules is fine. I like to be very consistent. I usually have rules in sets. One for messages that are incoming and one for messages that I send or that are outgoing. So I'm simply going to call this Infinite Skills Incoming. If we want to start getting things cleaned up now, we can check the box that says run this rule now on messages already in the inbox. We do want to turn on the rule. And if we have more than one account, we could say if this happens with any accounts, create it for all of them. I would go ahead and make sure that we review or read out loud our rule one more time to make sure it sounds correct. And then we can simply click or tap finish. Depending on how much you have in your inbox, you may have to wait a few seconds as it processes through the rules. But now we can see that this rule has been saved and it is ready to go. As a matter of fact, it's already been run. I want to remind you that one of the options we have when we have two or more rules is to move them up and down. That's because the order of rules is important. Remember, one of the settings we had for this rule was, once it runs, stop trying to do anything else. It can be very important, depending on what we're doing, to have the rules in the correct order so they execute appropriately. Usually, we want to have rules that are more specific above rules that are more generic. For example, I could say, if I get anything from Infinite Skills that has Outlook 2013 in the subject line, move that to the Outlook 2013 folder. That would need to be above this one. Otherwise, it would get filed first into just the Infinite Skills folder and not the most specific folder possible. That will become more apparent, I think, when you're creating your own rules, but I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. When we're finished creating or modifying our rules, we can click OK. And what we may notice, if we were paying close attention, is the rule that we had from Chris in our inbox is now gone from the inbox. Guess where it is? If we click or tap over on Infinite Skills, the message has been moved via our rule to the folder. I can't help but just love rules. Why would I want to drag and drop messages all day just to organize them when Outlook can do it automatically and so much better for me? I don't have to worry about losing any of my messages. If this was an unread message, I would find it because it would show up in my unread mail. But by having Outlook file it for me, it keeps my inbox tidied up and I always know where all of my messages from Infinite Skills can be found. If I could make one recommendation to anybody using Outlook on how to optimize their use, it would be to definitely create folders and then create rules so that Outlook can help us do the housekeeping. It's a simple thing to do, and it can save us so much time and energy that it's absolutely unbelievable.